All right, uh, John, I had mentioned earlier that I thought that you were uh, profound and eloquent in a way that I hadn't heard expressed on the subject of privilege. Uh, it was very much uh, gentle and reaching across the aisle. So without insulting the aggrieved here in America who uh, feel like they have every right in the world to be aggrieved, what do you mean when you say that when you come from a position of privilege, sometimes you don't notice some of the things happening around you until they're storming the Capitol uh, with, with weaponry that leaves uh, somebody dead in the hallway? Yeah, I, I, I think privilege is about the absence of an impediment. Right? For the first thing to say is this, every single person believes in some kind of privilege. Everybody understands the privilege for example, of being a native speaker in a country. So whether you're American going to somewhere in Europe or British going somewhere in, in, in Europe, you understand the advantage of being a speaker of that language. You understand the advantage, the privilege of being born in a wealthy family versus a poor one, going to a private or independent school versus going to a, a comprehensive or a state school. We, we know about these privileges and we understand them. We understand that they, they provide an advantage, but when you're in them, I went to a grammar school in this country. That's a, a, a not a comprehensive school, not a state school. It's a slightly better fee paying school where I got a bursary. And I took for granted that that's what school was. It never occurred to me that other people went to schools where they just didn't learn stuff, where there was chaos, where there were teachers who were disengaged. That's an advantage I took my entire life through without even considering until I got to witness what other people's schooling experience was like. The problem we have is that oftentimes privilege ends with race and gender. As a man, as men, we have huge privilege, huge privilege. I didn't really think about this. There's a woman who did a Twitter feed and I'll find it and post it on my Twitter feed after this, but she did this question. She asked women, what would you do if men had a curfew after nine o'clock? And that's the thing that taught me about male privilege. And that's the thing that taught me about male privilege, because I watched the responses from women across the world, and they were so, they were so mundane, Dan. They were so ordinary. I'd walk with both my headphones in. I'd run at night. I'd leave my drink at the bar. I'd watch the stars. This is stuff I'd never considered that I, I couldn't do. That the absence of that impediment had never occurred to me because I'd never asked a woman what her experience was like. And when it comes to blackness, I'm a psychologist. I'm a 50 year old psychologist. I live in a penthouse in Covent Garden. I don't know what the American or Miami equivalent, maybe your house equivalent of that is, but it's doing all right. And I get stopped and searched three times a year. A man, in a uniform, in a police uniform, holds me by my arm. And the last time it happened, I was wearing a three-piece suit. And outside of Leicester Square Tube Station, a man who looked 12 to me, a police officer who looked 12 to me, held me by the arm, looked me in the face, and told me that I resembled a description. I was wearing a three-piece suit I am six foot nine and I have a bushy white beard. I, I, I'm genuinely interested to know the doppelganger that I have in London and I'm aware it's a big city. <laughs> Most, the reason I say this is because this happens to me three times a year. It hasn't happened this in 2020. Uh, I just want to be absolutely full disclosure. And that's because the solution to not being stopped and to being stopped and searched in the street for me as a, a large black person is to never leave my house. Most white people have never considered that it could happen. I watch in the before times when there were tourists here in central London and white people would come up and they would walk up to the, a police officer who was not facing in their direction. And I would watch incredulous as they approach a police officer from behind and then touch them, tap them on the shoulder and they would turn around, they would see their faces, their white faces and they would smile and they would get direction somewhere. And I would watch this enraptured because I am not a, a, a lawbreaker. I am 
unbelievably boring. But I'm terrified of the police because I know how humiliating it is to be held by the arm by a man who looks 12. If you've never considered this, that's a privilege. You've never considered the possibility. Every lift, every um, elevator I get in, I know where everybody's wallet is. Because men in lifts with me, they put their hands on their wallet, in, in, you know, the, on the jacket pocket. Women take their bags from the shoulder closest to me and put it on the shoulder furthest away. And this is happening to me, a psychologist. What is so scary? And it's happening in a lift. And let's face it, I am old and I'm a bit decrepit. But if I'm trapped in a five foot by five foot box with you going up 40 floors, if I want your wallet, I'm having your wallet. But this is the stuff that people don't consider. And it may seem inconsequential to you, but it doesn't happen once. Every day I walk outside in public, I know that I'm a monster. Because that's how people respond to me. They don't look at me and think there's that clever guy who's got a bit of a fixation with Star Wars. No, no, they don't think that. They cross the street. That tells you something about yourself that's horrible. And there's a white person, you've probably not had that. And it doesn't mean you've never been had an interaction with the police. It just means your interaction with the police isn't because of the color of your skin. Privilege is not, it, it doesn't mean unearned riches. I know that the people, some of the people who are listening to this show right now, they've got nothing like the wealth privilege that I have, nothing like the education privilege that I have. I am a deeply, deeply privileged person. And I admit that every single day. And you know what happens when I do that? Absolutely nothing, except for the fact that I am slightly better at interacting with people without privilege. I am slightly more inquisitive about understanding the ways that I am not impeded that other people are. 